It's the third, this is a Sunday morning and it's the third like incredible case we've got. We've got a cockatiel. If you guys want to just take a look at it in this, in this little carrier cage. It's a female cockatiel that, that's pretty collapsed, it's paralyzed, it's lost the use of both its feet. Now, what's happened in a human or a dog or a cat, when you lose the, when you lose the use of your feet, you think of a disc prolapse, a spinal problem. But what's uniquely going on in this bird, I haven't looked yet, is it's a, a little bird that's not meant to lay eggs like a chicken. And it's been laying an egg every second day for the last few weeks. It's laid 10 eggs. And the little skeleton's going to be depleted of calcium. Now, calcium is needed for bone growth, bone strength. But when you've got an egg, when you've got an egg happening, it really pulls the body stores out. And 10 eggs later, this little cockatiel's got nothing left. So it flew from a little girl's shoulder to the bed. And just a small bit of trauma and the sp either spinal fracture or spinal issues and it's now paralyzed. And the lesson to everyone is cockatiels or birds that are laying too many eggs can get calcium depletion. Because remember the sea diet that, that birds are on doesn't have calcium and not the amount needed for eggs every day. For one or two eggs we'll usually be okay. Chickens that are laying eggs a day have a special diet that is fortified with protein and calcium. But a cockatiel fed seed, and most clients will feed their birds simple seed, is specifically de deficient in calcium. There's so, so little calcium, and it's also deficient in 18 other common amino acids. But vitamin A is another major deficiency. But you can't have a bird laying an egg that's full of protein and calcium on a seed diet, and definitely not 10. So it's very sad that, that, that this little bird um, is in that situation. Controlling egg laying is not just simply a hormonal injection, but we, which is something we'll discuss, but we have got a contraceptive. I'm using the word in, in inverted commas because it's actually a menopausal in, in, inducing drug. For the doctors and specialists out there, it's a GnRH agonist. So it stops GnRH in the hypothesis in the brain, which, which stops FSH and LH which stops estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. It just stops everything, so it's like menopause. And with a little bit of calcium, these guys do well. But stopping egg laying, you need, there's five things you can control. One is, you, can, you need a partner. And even if this bird doesn't have a sexual partner, this female, the partner might be something at home. It might be one of the humans at home. Sometimes it's a mirror, sometimes it's an object, but there's a, a partner or a perceived partner. You need a nice home before you have kids as a human. So there's usually a nest or a perceived nest or they'll make a nest or they'll go into a closet or they'll start tearing things up. That's thing number two. Three, you need a very stable environment. So normally um, everything's comfortable and if a bird's really comfortable, it seems to help with um, egg laying. Fourth thing, you need high calorie, unlimited available diet. And when you've got that seed diet, it's very fatty, it's very high calorie and that promotes egg laying and that's why we discuss dieting cockatiels the ideal diet will contain no more than 50 percent seed it has to have, ideally should have pellets and vegetables so please note we don't say cockatiels should have seed we recommend 50 percent seed but not more than that and the last thing is daylight length so when the daylight's long in summer and it's hot and there's long days it promotes egg laying and specifically that's why in September, October, November, when daylight is getting longer every day, it really promotes um, egg laying. But cockatiels indoors, sometimes some of these effects change. So we have a behaviorist who works with us. You would have Mel from Works for Birds, and we would encourage a visit with her because she'll discuss all these things in detail over a one hour time frame and, and address all these issues. We sometimes even try with light, but that's really tricky at changing lights in a household and it can really mess up quality of life with your your birds but changing decreasing day length is something you can that would help we now at this particular time it's february one we now um one and a half months from december the 22nd which as everyone knows is the longest day of the year so we starting to decrease day length and that will help switch off so let's take out our little patient Fika. So firstly, you can see you can see that some of the toenails are broken, but the nails are very, very long. See how long the nails are? So the perches aren't ideal. There's another egg inside her at the moment. 
She's got an egg trying to get out that's stuck inside her at the moment. So I can feel the egg by just putting my finger on the back side here. Mm -hmm. um, pretty underweight, you can kind of see she's very low body weight. So I'm going to phone the owner and discuss, ideally with this bird, we'd admit the bird, start on some calcium and some fluids, and tomorrow we'll anesthetize and give the contraceptive injection and remove the egg. But this egg probably isn't coming out. So you, I hope you're going to be able to save you. So the treatment for egg binding is pretty standard. We use the same kind of treatment all the time. Um, generally, in a bird that's laid a lot of eggs like this one, it's hypocalcemic, so it got a calcium injection. Um, normally, there's a degree of dehydration, so he got fluids. This little bird weighs 84 grams. He got five mils of, of fluid. He got lactate. We also manipulated the cloaca in the egg. And in this particular case, we uh, managed to, ex we actually, uh, actually crushed the egg. So by crushing the egg, I was able to extract it without an anesthetic. And you can see the whole egg has come out with the shell complete. And at least that's the first part of the, the, first part of the treatment is done. Um, we've still got a bird that's paralyzed. He can use his left leg, but the right leg's really weak. And um, tomorrow he will get a quick anesthetic when he gets his hormone implant. I've also clipped the nails so I don't catch on to things. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm very happy that the first part of the progress with the egg extraction, mm -hmm. calcium fluids, he's also on an antibiotic and anti-inflammatory as well. You better do well. So the prognosis is maybe 70, 80%, it's not 100. We've already got damaged the nerves. And as you know, neuropathies or nervous damage You've got to give them time, nursing care, and medical care. So medical antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, nursing care, we want him comfortable and hygienic and keeping him clean. And time is three to four days, so he's with us for Wednesday anyway.